there's always going to be somebody with a full frame sensor camera who thinks that people that use cameras with APS-C or micro four thirds sensors are somehow missing out or have the wrong equipment. And here's what I think about that. My viewpoint on all this really is, comes from a, a viewpoint that is informed by many years of shooting film cameras. And for those of you that have you know, shot film cameras or currently shoot film cameras, you'll, you'll have a better understanding. And especially those people that have ever shot transparencies or slides. You know, when I was, when I was growing up shooting cameras, if you shot slide film, like Kodachrome 25 or, or one of the Ektachrome films, you learned very quickly that that film had almost no latitude and that you had to know your exposures or your pictures were gonna be just no good. You know, Kodachrome 25 and 64 slides were I think the mainstay of National Geographic and I don't think anyone can argue that the quality of their images and the, and the professional level of their photographers probably second to none. They, they've always had the best imagery. And yet somehow today we get hooked on this idea that if your sensor doesn't have however many pixels or so much certain amount of dynamic range that somehow you're, you're just, your stuff is crap. And, and I think that's just crazy. You know, if you look at film, 35 millimeter film, the dynamic range of Kodachrome 25 was around eight stops. It really wasn't much. And the latitude on the film, mean, in other words, how much you could under or overexpose the film, was very small. I mean, overexposure, probably half a stop. You could underexpose it, maybe a full stop and get away with it. But if you missed your exposure much at all, your images were no good. You really just had to nail the exposure or those pictures weren't any good. Now this is a, this is a Kodachrome 25 slide. My father took back during the Korean War, and of course you can't see the image. But for those of you that have never seen slide film, these were mounted in plastic or cardboard frames, so they could be put in a slide projector. And if you shot for a major publication like National Geographic, you shot Kodachromes and you sent the film in, they processed it, mounted it, and then they would go through your images and, and those that the exposures were not good on got chucked in the trash, or at least not used. So, the uh, those of us that have grown up with film cameras really understand what working with a limited dynamic range is all about. And when we switch to digital, I mean, like I switched to a digital camera and I'm blown away by how many stops of dynamic range my, my camera has. And having an extra stop or two or whatever of dynamic range doesn't really help me. I mean, realistically, think about all the great um, famous pictures throughout the last century. And many of them have blocked up shadows or blown out highlights, but that's not what matters in terms of a great picture. Nobody looks at your picture and goes, wow, that, that's a fantastic picture. Look, I can see a little bit of extra detail in the shadows or a little bit of extra detail in the highlights. That's not what makes a great picture. It's the part of your picture that is correctly exposed. That's the main subject matter of the picture. That's what makes the picture, the composition, the subject itself. And that extra bit of dynamic range, it's a great technology thing, but it's not what makes a great photographer. It's not the camera that makes the image. It's the skill and the talent and the craft of the photographer that really makes the image. Now, one of the subjects that you sometimes hear when it comes to image sensor size is depth of field. People with full frame cameras will say, well, the the smaller sensors, like the micro four thirds, the lenses are shorter focal length. They just have way too much depth of field. You can't get the soft backgrounds. And folk, you know, depth of field is depth of field, and it's based on focal length largely. And and that's something that's existed over time. You know, people that shot or still shoot large format cameras, four by five or eight by ten cameras. You know, they they have very compressed depth of field. It, it's very easy to make your backgrounds out of focus. I mean, you almost can't avoid it unless you really stop down. And, you know, compared to medium format, full frame has too much depth of field, you know. And it's one of the things that I loved about shooting medium format film cameras back when, and I still do that, but back when I was actively shooting in, with film, um, is the, you know, again, the reduction in depth of field that I got with those images and those lenses. 
And the same thing is true when you compare micro four thirds to full frame. But can I get soft out of focus backgrounds like for portraiture uh, with my micro four thirds camera? Oh yeah, no problem. And I don't have to use super speed lenses to do it. Um, you know, if I'm shooting portraiture and I use like a 45 or a 50 millimeter lens that's say as fast as f1.8 or f2, I'm easily going to be able to throw my backgrounds out of focus, make them soft. That's easy to do. And, you know, it, it does require that you're probably going to need to shift away from a zoom lens, maybe to a prime lens to get a, a larger maximum aperture or uh, maybe one of the more expensive zooms that is a, um, you know, got a fixed maximum aperture. Um, but even with the, the full frame sensor cameras, zoom lenses that have a maximum aperture of like f3.5 or f4, something like that, you're still going to have too much depth of field. You're gonna, your backgrounds aren't going to be super soft. If you want to get soft backgrounds, um, then you really have to go to a large aperture. And that's, that doesn't really matter what size sensor you're using. And here's what I also think is interesting about that. This, this whole thing with soft out of focus backgrounds and bokeh, which wasn't even a term when I was um, shooting film back in the day. I mean, it, it wasn't even a word that existed. Um, back then, you know, if, if I'm shooting portraiture and I wanted the backgrounds out of focus and soft, then I used a longer focal length lens with a large aperture, no problem. And I can still do that with micro four thirds. And the whole idea that your backgrounds always need to be soft and out of focus um, is, is, is a little weird. It's, it's kind of an obsession today with this bokeh craze that's kind of going around. I mean, again, if we go back to some of the famous photographs of the last century, um, most of them had a lot of depth of field. Um, and a lot of cameras back then, you had to zone focus and you used a small aperture to make sure you had plenty of depth of field to do that. The composition styles back then didn't require that the background be out of focus in order to isolate the subject. Um, a good photographer, even with plenty of depth of field, can isolate the subject from the background uh, using composition. So, you know, styles of photography change, and, you know, this is popular right now. In a few years, it may be different again, and something else may be popular. But don't be led to think that you can't get those results with a small sensor. You absolutely can. And, um, you know, I, that's, a, that's kind of a weird argument that the people that shoot full-frame cameras have made. Um, but again, you know, if, if you want to compare medium format to full-frame, there's, again, a huge difference. So, you know, if you really, if you really want the blown-out, out-of-focus backgrounds, you know, maybe you should be shooting medium format or large format. So, you know, that, that argument existed in film days. It exists now. It's not really an argument back then. It was just an understanding that the longer the focal length lens, the less depth of field you had and, the you know, more isolated your subject would be from the background due to the background being out of focus. And that still exists today. If you look at some of the great cinematic work shot on uh, 35 millimeter even 16 millimeter um, film cameras and keep in mind 35 millimeter motion picture is half frame 35 millimeter so it's not as big as full frame um, they were able to isolate their backgrounds throw them out of focus you know without any real problem it was that cinematic look that we talk about today um, was done largely on 35 millimeter half frame motion picture you know the idea that you can't get that isolated, you know, soft background look um, from a smaller sensor is, is just silly. You can, absolutely can. Now, I shoot micro four thirds cameras. If you've seen some of my videos, you know I, I really love the Olympus cameras and the micro four thirds sensors they have. And, and the things that I really like about this have nothing to do with the dynamic range. I love the color science that Olympus has. I love the size, the quality of the cameras. I love how I'm able to interact with the camera and very easily get the results I want without having to fiddle with a bunch of, you know, menus and screens and, you know, controls that I don't understand. I'm able to set this camera up where I can very quickly and easily use it. But I also shoot full frame cameras. Well, it is full frame. So I, I do still shoot a lot of film cameras and, and of course, 
all my 35 millimeter cameras. I don't really have any half frame cameras anymore. Somewhere I do have an Olympus Pen F half frame SLR. But I understand from shooting from film that exposure and the dynamic range are, are just things you work with. They're not limitations. You work with the tools that you have. You know, if, if you are good with your craft and you know the limitations of your tools and you work within those limitations, you know, you're not limited in terms of your artistic ability to create good images. So it's, it's real important that we, as photographers, become familiar with our equipment, learn the limitations of our equipment. I, you know, I, remember my, I think I mentioned my dad was a photographer and he was, he was actually after the Korean War, he became a, a news photographer and did that for a number of years and then became a commercial photographer, which he did the rest of his working career. And, you know, I grew up with a camera in my hand. I've had been shooting pictures with cameras. I remember taking a uh, Minolta autocord to school in fifth grade and taking pictures of my friends and stuff. I still have those negatives. And the, the thing that you learn with cameras is that you have to become familiar with the camera so that it kind of becomes an extension of you so that you know the controls, you know, um, you know, everything about the camera, the way it operates, so that when you're trying to take pictures, you're not having to think about how to operate the camera. You, you know that, that just becomes a part of you and you can really focus and think about the composition, the lighting, you know, the, the things that you need to do to uh, get a good image. I remember my dad sitting and watching TV sometimes and he would have some new camera. I remember he bought a, a Pentax 6x7 and he was sitting watching TV with the family. We were watching a movie and he's got that, pit, that Pentax 6x7 in his hand and he's, he's looking at it and he's opening the back and he's fiddling with it and winding it. And if you know what a Pentax 6x7 sounds like, it sounds like, you know, someone slammed a door every time you take a picture. <laughs> it's pretty loud. And I think my mom got a little bit annoyed because he's, you know, whining and clack, you know, and whining pictures and, and just playing with the camera while we're watching TV. And she kind of made him put it away. But what he was doing was getting familiar with the camera. He wanted to be able to change the aperture, change the shutter speed, wind the camera, load film. And it just, he wanted all that to be just kind of automatic so that he didn't have to think about that when he's out having to take pictures. He wanted to be able to instead think about the pictures he was taking and the exposure and the composition, the subject matter. And so I think that's one of the places where we can really improve our, the technical side of our craft, if we're going to focus on technical stuff, is getting familiar with our equipment. Just not only using it and taking plenty of pictures with it, but just becoming familiar with the controls. And I think most of your digital cameras today, like I can I can go in the menus and I can set all the controls on this to do what I want. I can make the controls, you know, increase the aperture or decrease the aperture size or increase or decrease the shutter speed. You know, depending on which way I rotate the dial, I can actually control which way it goes depending on which way I rotate the dials. I can choose what all my buttons do. And so I set my cameras up so that I'm able to work with them. And, I, and so I set them up all the same way, so they basically all operate the same way. And I don't have to really think about when I roll a, one of the controls with my thumb, I know what it's going to do. And uh, I think focusing on those kind of technical things with your cameras probably does you a lot more good than thinking about, wow, my sensor only has 12 and a half stops of dynamic range. What am I going to do? You know, I don't think that's really where you're going to find um, your best pictures. I think we've reached a point with camera technology where the difference between the image quality between a micro four thirds camera and an APS-C camera and a full frame camera are so close to be insignificant. I mean, the difference is insignificant. You know, we're, I've seen several videos where someone takes a micro four thirds camera and they shoot an image and take a full frame camera, shoot the same image, and they make 20 by 30 inch prints to see if they can tell the difference and, and they're virtually indistinguishable. If you really feel like you need the bigger sensor, I mean, if you shoot portraits or, or maybe you're, you know, wedding photographer and you don't mind carrying the extra size equipment around, uh, or maybe you're an architectural photographer and, and you really feel like the extra image size or sensor size is important, you know, buy a full frame camera. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, I, I'm not saying at all that you shouldn't buy a full frame camera. If that's really what you feel like you need, then, I mean, if you're gonna do that, I mean, go big or go home, go medium format. If you really want a big sensor, go large format. But 
I really think it's important to buy a camera that fits your needs. So, you know, if you're an outdoor photographer, a bird photographer, a, a um, you know, someone that travels, then a, a smaller camera that you can, you know, pack more easily, you can carry more lenses and more gear in less space, you know, that's probably just as important a criteria because the image quality capability of today's cameras are, are all just fantastic. So, you know, when you buy a new camera, don't, don't make image sensor size your primary criteria. Make the usability of the camera, how it, how it falls to your hand, how the, you interact with the controls. You know, the, the color science is probably as much or more important than the image sensor size. I, one of the reasons I like Olympus cameras, um, I mean, when I, when I started looking for digital, um, I trusted the Olympus name. I've, I've been using their cameras for a long time. I love their technology. I love their innovation. I love the size of their cameras. And so those are important criteria to me. I, I quickly found out that I didn't really have to worry about the image quality. Um, but one of the things I did notice a difference in, and one of the things I really do like with Olympus is their color science. I really love the way they, their cameras produce color images. So, you know, when you're picking a camera, there's a lot of criteria other than sensor size to think about. And if, and if you have a camera with an APS-C or a micro four-thirds sensor, don't let anyone convince you that somehow you've got something less than you should have, that you need to go buy something bigger with a bigger sensor just because it has a bigger sensor. That's, um, that's folly. That's um, kind of where my thinking comes in on the uh, image sensor size. If you think I'm wrong or if you think I'm, I, uh, I'm not thinking about this right, then please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I, uh, I do appreciate it if you would uh, click on the like and the subscribe button. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.